es el fuego que yo conozco es el fuego que yo what is the deal beautiful people Welcome to Lifestyles Defined, and on this channel, we talk about tech all day, every day. My name is Ramon. Today's topic, we're talking about Snapchat dysmorphia. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is this is something that uh, I I don't even know where to start with this. I've often been uh, I've been on the side of social media defending social media through various discussions, but also understanding the anger towards social media. You know, for me, social media has not always been what it is today. This negative connotation, this, this cesspool of people behaving the ass. Uh, social media started out as such a beautiful thing. I, I think the internet in its entirety started out as such a beautiful thing. But as we would have it... Uh, I would like to take the word media away from social, and this is just a social thing. People, when they get together, are the dumbest bunch of fucks the world has ever seen. The intellig the, the, the inner intellectual or the individual may be intelligent, but people, people are just stupid. And I'm reminded of it time and time again, and not only on social media, but just in social environments. You guys gotta remember, I live in New York. And I'm in a social environment from the time I step out of my door. And I just see the wildest things every single day. Some of it related to social media. Some of it just related because there's just five people standing in a circle. I go to work. It's the same thing. I come home. Well, I ain't got any problems at home. That's why I love this place. But you get what I'm trying to say. This, however, I think is a, a new direction uh, this, I think, is, is something that's very troubling. So when I talk about social media and the connotation that it has and people, oh, social media, this, social media, that, that's why I don't be on social media. Like, no, it, social media is not the problem. Number one, in almost all of these social media platforms, if not all of them, you control what you see. You control the narrative. So... To, to come to me with a story about people jumping off of a bridge because they're depressed because they're at home eating ramen noodles and their best friend is off on the Brooklyn Bridge pretending to be on the Eiffel Tower. I, like, you're the one that looked at that. You're the one that followed that person. So I've always pushed back on that, that narrative. Like, nah, I don't believe it. People are doing it to themselves, and if it wasn't on social media, they'd be if they'd find a way to do it anyway. They'd be reading some novel about some fucking writer's fictional story, and oh my god, I'm doing nothing with my life, and then here comes the depression. So I'm not all sold on the pitchfork behavior when it comes to social media. Of course, I'm well aware of the buffoonery that goes on in social media as well. But this is something completely different. This has nothing to do with your perceived uh, narrative on someone else and what they're doing versus how it makes you feel and what you're doing. This is people outwardly trying to change themselves based on how they perceive themselves on a filter. This is nuts. So what's happening here are people are going to plastic surgeons and they are trying to get plastic surgery to make themselves look like these Snapchat filters. And what we know about, you know, is that super glowy look. They want the wider eyes. They want the pointy nose. They want the full lips. And like, this is this is kind of wild. And it reminds me of a story. <laughs> it reminds me of a story. I will not say this young lady's name, but she saw my photography and she go, wow, you're an amazing photographer. Could you take a picture of me? She was very into herself and she's all over the Snapchat. I said, yeah, I'll take a picture of you. And I took the picture and in true to classic form, uh, she didn't see that picture for like another week or two uh, because I had shit to do. And of course, as a photographer, I got to go through my editing process and it takes my creative self. It's just, I'm not just pointing a selfie camera and snap, snap, no. This is real photography. Shameless plug on our photography site, Lifestyles Defined Photography. Check that channel out. Link is always in the description below. 
so yeah, I you know I take my time. I edit the picture. Very tasteful edit. Very tasteful color grading. Cleaned up some of the blemishes, but left it a very natural look. This young lady looked at the picture and said, "Oh, I don't like it." I mean, all right, cool. You know, I'm I'm not, you know. I, I'm not Basquiat or anything. People's opinion on my work doesn't really sway my mood. I said, all right, cool. No big deal. It's all good. You didn't like it. You didn't like it. And she goes, no. Can you make it look more like this? Some kind of like this. What is like this? And she pulls out her phone, launches Snapchat, takes a selfie, and throws a filter on. I want to say, do you understand that is not what you look like? And it's crazy like... No, she did not understand that's not, not what she looked like. To her, that is what she looks like when I see her. And that, my friends, is super wild. So doctors have now coined this, this phrase, Snapchat dysmorphia. And it is, it is very, it's a very real thing and it's linked to what they call BDD or body dysmorphia disorder. And what happens here is people start to obsess over perceived flaws in their body. And if left untreated, it can get very, very unhealthy. In fact, they talk about some of the treatments to this as being uh, serious cognitive behavioral therapy, where you, you sort of teach the person how to not think negatively and correct negative thoughts with positive thoughts. Like, how the fuck is a Snapchat filter doing this to people? Now, I didn't run across this article. It was on CNET. Snow actually sent it to me. And not only did Snow send it to me, which kind of raised my eyebrow because of the story I told you earlier, I experienced this firsthand, but he had some very real thoughts on it. And you know what? Let's get into his thoughts right now. What's the deal, LD Familia? It's your boy Snow. Don't forget to check me out over at the Ignorant Gamers channel. But I wanted to jump in on this subject with Ramon, a.k.a. Uncle Rizza, and talk about this Snapchat dysmorphia and also give you a little bit of a background of why I'm going to say ultimately what I'm about to tell you about how I, th how this is really bad and this is getting out of hand. If we go back through time, you see that w specifically women have been attacked for beauty standards that are just unrealistic even when we didn't have all this photo editing stuff camera tricks are is <laughs> very deceiving T today's world men are also attacked but it will never amount up to the the pressure that women have to look and feel beautiful and it mainly starts with all types of media social media is media right if we look back to the old days you know, black and white photos, the angles, the angles is what got everybody, right? We've mastered the angles. Now, the magazines have also, you know, used angles with 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 clever ways of burning and dodging and making people look beautiful through makeup. Now, that's got out of hand. And we got software, Photoshop, which is where I start. I've been using Photoshop since probably late 1998. And I've learned some stuff in there. And that kind of like, was like wow i remember i did an editing for someone that had a style guide this is a celebrity that has a style guide for how to edit them when i edit them they have a double chin when you see the photo they have a pointy chin it's stuff like that right that's what gave the early uh the late 80s and the early 90s all those bo those botox and we talk about you know breast enhancements and then now we're in this craze of you know booty enhancements and then if you go back in between people removing you know weight from the stomach and tucking it other places women being attacked with wrinkles in the hands and feet and you know all this crazy stuff fast forward to when facebook was really starting to pop off people were we're, we're very conscious of what their profile photo looked like and it did one positive thing which made people go get their 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 teeth looked at i thought that was amazing because it had kids kids wanting to go get braces braces was popping people were openly rocking braces to go in front of their teeth instead of trying to get invisalines or braces to go behind their teeth when i was growing up you did not want to be the kid with the braces in front of your teeth you just didn't want it now it's like hey look at me i'm getting my teeth done look at my braces to prove fast forward to the technology in our phones and ramon is probably going to tell the story about when he took the picture of a girl and then she was complaining about it against her iphone and he took a picture with his 
thousand dollar camera, professional camera. Yeah, that's when I knew we were out of hand because all these phones or most of these phones have this auto smoothing thing that goes on in the phone is a filter that does it automatically. It's like live editing. Fast forward to Snapchat. And I remember when I seen it, I was like, this is going to be a problem. My friends, who majority of them are males, I have a very balanced, I would say about 60, 40 male, female, men, women, young women, young women relationship. And the guys would complain to me that they would be going on dating or meeting new people and everybody's sending these filtered photos because you don't look like that. They don't look like that when they see them. And now to hear this story about Snapchat dysmorphia and how people want to get the surgery to look like this. Yes, it's still the surgery for the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and all this stuff, the chin. But this is just a new way that's attacking humans to get surgeries for stuff that they don't look like because of a filter. And people aren't able to filter that they're putting a filter on them. And they're trying to achieve this. This is crazy and it's very disheartening to me because I have young sisters. I have young nieces and again i have young brothers and i have young nephews i try to tell my my siblings i try to tell everybody that i know hey those filters are cool but stop doing it so much i understand that they're fun the, the dog the talk the dog's tongue come out and you know the little funny things that's around your head and all that like it's cool but People are going to start believing that this is what they look like. And if you know that a young kid always is impressionable, and if you are of a certain ethnicity or something, you already have problems with your skin, and this does lightning, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it's very bad to, it's very bad to see this. And I just wanted to make sure that if you guys are watching this video, that you just take heed to this. And if you don't understand, drop questions in below. You know, I'm sure that I could probably point you to something to help you understand. And again, it's not bad to want to improve yourself, but it's also more important to love yourself as you are and you make it happen to the best of your ability. Don't forget to check me out over at Ignorant Gamers, your boy Snow, and I'm gone. Peace. Very well put. I mean, there isn't much else to say on this topic. I wish we weren't in this space. It's getting very, very dangerous. I can't say that this is something that hasn't already existed. As Snow pointed out with traditional magazine media, you have all of the, uh, you had an entire generation, if you want to admit it or not, trying to dress like everything on MTV. You had all these people, super punk, super goth. Like, this is just an evolution of that. And I don't think, I don't think people will ever stop being, uh, oh, what's the word? It's on the tip, impressionable. I think that is a human trait and it's very hard to stop it if people aren't comfortable in their own skin. This is super sad. I don't even, I don't know what to say. Hit the comments. I want to know what you guys think about this. And uh, yeah, like the video if you like it. Show it to a friend who you think needs to be aware of this and should stop the madness. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. My name is Ramon. Thank you, Snow, for weighing in. Check him out at Ignorant Gamers, our sister channel for gaming. And I am out of here. Peace.